This story was handed down to me by the elders of the Barkindji Nation. Nurulai is the creator of all around here within the Barkindji Nation. Nurulai came down at Lake Victoria. He descended from the heavens up there and he, he seen this creek. In that creek was a cod, a bundle. And when he seen the cod, he started chasing them. As the cod was escaping from Nurulai, the sweeping of his tail actually formed the bends in the river. The river is this great coiling, sort of never-ending coil that uh, actually refuses to pour itself into the sea. It wants to stay here. It spreads into billabongs. It goes into various branches and creeks. It doesn't want to go anywhere but stay here. The, the river is the centre. We all uh, revolve around it. It's our source. You were stuck out in the bush, especially these, the wheat farmers and wheat cockies, as Dad used to call them. They were just stuck out there. These people definitely belong to this area and they have this feeling of, of belonging to it and and being part of it. And, and it's just lovely to be amongst all that. and said that people who live in the Mallee have got dust in their veins. And it really becomes part of you, the land. to look up and see that inky blackness with these beautiful stars. You get these fabulous ghosty sort of shadows with these vast red gums which just are there like huge bodies as though they've been there forever and they have. The river itself, in a sense, is extremely moody. It's uh, never the same twice. You go out each day as if it's your first day, because it can come up with some tremendous surprises. At one stage, it was often said that if you had the one plank with the vessel's name on it, that was sufficient to start rebuilding it. Go through sand and when you arrive here, the green is really what impresses most people. get this sense almost of being anywhere. It is an internationality of look, which is absolutely fantastic. You could be in France, you could be in Italy, you could be anywhere. There's no doubt about the harvest. It affects everybody in the town. We watch the weather for them. 
we live it out. We really sweat that weather out for them. We're all aware, everybody here that lives here and works here and cultivates land or whatever pursuit they have, is well aware that without the river, we're not here anymore. Sure, there are challenges out there and there's a lot of heartache. But I think when those challenges are thrown at you, it makes a good farmer a better farmer. The rewards are knowing that what you have endeavoured to do over a 12 month period has come to fruition. We go look for trees, apple trees, prom, plum trees, we wines. Have, I mean, we have an orange tree, a We've lemon got tree, a plum tree, a nectarine tree, and an apple tree, 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 an orange tree, a lemon orange orange tree, a lemon tree. trees, um, apricot trees, and almond trees. We just pick the low ones. We are a crossroad. A crossroad of cultures and a crossroad of economic interest, a crossroad of rivers, because it is the confluence of the great Darling River and, and the mighty Murray. And this is where the two rivers go hand in hand. And it is a confluence of rivers and it is a confluence of people. That's why it is exciting to live here. It comes from the river. It's for everyone, you know? Everybody, not just Aboriginal people, but everybody that, that comes to Mildura and stays here. They identify or recognise something, some form of spirituality that comes from it. I'm sure that that's what makes this whole Mildura so special. <laughs>